Welcome back to the .NET on Azure Beginner Series. In this episode, we're going to talk about how we can get our Azure services to talk to each other without the use of a connection string at all. So we're going to be talking about service principles and managed identity. Before we get there, well, let's talk about a little bit about token-based authentication and the benefits of it. So one of the benefits is no more connection strings at all. So essentially, we're going to make our applications use fake users, more or less. They're going to be just like you or I. When we access an application, we, they're going to have a token. They're not going to need a connection string. So they are also going to have specific permissions, which gives us the ability to have the least amount of privileges. So before, when we were accessing a storage account with that connection string, we could do whatever we wanted with that storage account. But now, when we do token-based auth, we can say, you know what? You can only write to this blob container. Least privilege, which is very, very powerful. And we don't even have to manage the secrets store when we go with managed identity. There are no secrets. Azure hand handles it all for us. We don't even know what the password is. And that's the most secure password, the one that we don't know. And the Azure SDK itself manages the tokens, like the refresh tokens and, and so, so forth. So we don't have to worry about that either. It's all taken care of for us. So it's going to be the seamless experience so our applications and our Azure services can just interact with each other without having connection strings. So I mentioned that we have service principles and then managed identity. So what, what are the differences between two of them? So a service principle is like a fake user. It's like somebody getting put into Active Directory, and you can give it permissions and so on, but it's meant to represent a Azure service or actually an instance of the Azure service, like an app service running an application. So it's this fake user. And we can restrict access it can have via Azure role-based access control. So in other words, we can say, you know what? This app service, you can only upload blobs to a container. Or you can only view these certain keys from Key Vault. We can just say, you know what? We're going to really restrict the access down, just like you or I could have our access restricted. And when you would use a service principle, you use it from accessing Azure from the outside world. So like if you're doing Terraform deployments or you're running a DevOps pipeline, it's the outside world accessing Azure, which means you're going to be responsible for user IDs and secrets because you're going to have to enter them into the outside world so it can go ahead and access. But still, you have these outside world applications, this Terraform deployment, but it knows it has the credentials necessary to go in and do what it needs to do in Azure at at least privilege level, so just what it needs to do. So then, what's a managed identity. A managed identity is a service principle. So it has everything that a service principle has, but then some. It's always linked to an Azure resource. So whereas a service principle is meant to live outside of Azure and access things within it, a managed identity is meant to live inside Azure and access things within Azure. So a managed identity is an identity of an Azure resource that happens to be managed. So you don't need to know the credentials at all of it. Whereas for a service principle, if you're doing a DevOps pipeline, you would have to enter credentials in order to access Azure. Because things live within Azure, you don't need to maintain those credentials. Let Azure do it for you. And it's going to be system assigned. So when I go through, I can just say, you know what? Create me a service principle. And then everything gets assigned for me, managed. And then when it gets deleted, when I delete my resource, the service principle gets deleted, or the managed identity gets deleted for me. There is another type of managed identity, though, and it's called a user assigned one. So when I create a user assigned managed identity, it is its own standalone resource, too. And what's neat about a user assigned identity is I can go through and attach that user assigned identity to many different Azure resources. 
So let's say I have, I know I want this identity to be able to write to this blob storage. So I can give this user assigned identity. I can assign that to many different app services. So I don't have to create a system assigned identity for each one of those app services and grant those permissions. I can just create one user assigned identity and make those app services all have that same user assigned identity. So you can either do system assigned or user assigned. It's your choice. So let's then see our manage identity at work. So what I want to do is I want to take our Azure web service, the one that takes the storage and puts it up there, and I want to drop that connection string altogether. I don't want to use our connection strings any longer to get at the storage. And over on the web API side, I don't want to have that Azure SQL Server connection string there either. I want to use managed identities for everything. So let's do that. I'm going to open up the Azure portal, go into my resource group, and then pick out the app service that I want to use. And so I'm using the app Munson Web East US Dev 001. Scroll on down to identity. Once identity spinners finishes spinning up, you can see that I have a system assigned identity or a user assigned one. I'm going to use a system assigned one. Click that to on, click save, and it's saying, you know what, you're going to do it. That is true. I do want to do it. And it's going to go through and it's going to enable the system assigned identity for me. And once that's done, it's going to give me a a GUID for a principal ID, and then let me assign permissions had I want to right away from here. So this is the web service, and the web service needs to be able to access the storage service. And so what I want to do then is go down, find my storage account, found it, and then give permissions to that storage account to the web service. And I can do that through the access control menu on the left-hand side. And across the top, I have various things where I can check the access and see role assignments and also see various roles. And so the various roles are interesting. So if I go through and I pick the roles for storage accounts, I can then see the fine-grained access I can give it. So I could say, you know what, I could assign something to be, you know, just reader and data access, or a storage account contributor, or it's maybe a storage blob data owner, or a data reader. So it's fine grain access control. So that's what I want to do. I want to add a role assignment. And once that spins up, I'll be able to say, for that role assignment, I'm going to assign my brand new managed identity account. OK, so it came up. And so what I can do now is pick, again, the storage category. Open that up so I can see what I'm working with. I'm going to go pick through storage blob data contributor. Hit next. And then I'm going to say, you know what, I want a managed identity. It allows me to pick it. And then I can see, you know what, it shows me everything I've already have created. I'm just going to pick an app service. And then I have various app services here. So I know I'm going to want an app months in. So I should be able to filter it for me. So app Mumpson web east us dev 001. I'll select that, review and assign twice in a row. And now it's adding Munson to my role. Cool. So now the Munson web should be able to access the storage account without a connection string. I also want to add me to be able to do that as well. So let's do blob, blob data contributor. I'll click that. And then I'll click add, add role assignment. Find it again. Blob data contributor next, this time to me. Members. 
to user group member, select members. Here we go. Slid out, and now I can select my name. Should show up. All right, I can select me. So storage blob data contributor, give it access to me. Review and assign, review and assign. And eventually, it'll come through. And then if I go through underneath role assignments, it shows everything. But I should be able to go down and I see now blob storage data contributors. I see my app, and then I see me. Why is it important to add me? Because now when I go through down to my Munson Pickle web app, I can actually set things up so I don't need the storage connection string at all when I do my development. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to actually delete this whole storage connection string. I'm going to go into my app secrets, and I'm going to delete it from there too. Get that out of there. Gone. Now, what I want to do is actually add in a new Azure SDK package. And what that package is going to allow me to do is start using managed identity within my application. So new get packages, and I've already added it in, and it's called Azure.identity right here. So Azure.identity gives me the ability to start using managed identity from within my application. So have it already installed. And then, so what I want to do then next is in order to use, I still need to know the URL of my Azure storage account. So let's just do that. Storage URL. Storage URL is equal to, and I'm going to do the builder.configuration. And I'm not sure what I called it, so I'm just going to make an empty spot there and then check out in my app settings. And I have called it storage endpoint. Very good. So I'll just type that in here, storage endpoint. All right, so that's going to pull the URL in. And so when I add my blob storage client, I'm going to do a new URI, storage URL. So all I did now is that it's just going to point out to the URL of where it's going. Next, I'm going to say, you know what, Azure Builder? Use, use credentials to log in. And I'm going to do new default Azure credential. So that's going to say, you know what, when you're running, whether I'm running on Visual Studio or whether I'm running within, the Azure, within Azure itself, figure out who you are. And if you've been granted access to whatever resource you're trying to get at, use that credential then to get access. That's it. This now, I should be able to hit my storage account from here. And then away I go. I shouldn't have to worry about anything else. So let's run this. I should start up my web app, web API right away too, otherwise I will get an error. All right, so it's coming through. It wants me to log in. So now I have my web app up and running. It's calling over to my web API to get the data down. So far, so good. I haven't actually tried to get at the storage API yet. So when I do get at the storage API, and that's going to be in my write review component, All the way down at the bottom, I get the blob service injected into it. The blob service, when it gets injected into it, comes from the program that CS, and that's when I start doing my Azure, Azure clients, when I start doing that. Add blob service client, use credentials. I'm not using any connection strings. It should just work. Cross your fingers. Do deal pickles. Add a review, choose a file. We'll do beat this time. As soon as I choose the file, it hits my breakpoint, and I'm good to go. If I step over the top, 
Everything's in there. And I'll just say no credentials. How about no connection string? The name it, save it. Refresh it, no connection string, go view it. And there, my beat has been uploaded, saved to Azure Storage without a connection string at all. All right, so now what we have is our application running without a connection string and talking over to the storage account. And so then it's just a matter of redeploying that up to Azure and then having the managed identity, make sure that's set up to have it so it can connect to the storage account, which we set up before, and then going that way. So now, not only do we ha not have to have the connection string locally, which is great. We don't have to worry about leaking that anymore. We don't have to have it up in Azure any longer either. Great. So that is now managed identity and how it can help us out both locally and in Azure. And in the next episode, we'll start talking about how we can use containers to move through as well and light up our development experience and have the same app run in many different spots. Super easy.